What's up guys and welcome back to the DIY HVAC Guy YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to install this beautiful Turbro mini split system. This is a heat pump system, so it will work in heating and cooling. And the reason why this is beneficial is if you have an area in your house that just doesn't keep up with the central AC, this will allow it to get down to temperature that you want. They're extremely efficient and very affordable. And as you'll see in this video, they're very easy to install. I'm installing this for my neighbor today. He's got an addition that he just built onto the back of his home. And so this is a perfect opportunity to install a heating and cooling system that is ductless. It just has an indoor fan and an outdoor condenser, and that's it. And that's the beauty of having a mini split. All right, so this is where we're gonna be installing. Right on the other side of this wall is where our head unit's gonna be. The line set will come down. And since our box is right here, we chose to put the condenser within six feet of this box. So that eliminates the need to have a disconnect. So we have our pad leveled out right here. We're gonna get our condenser set and I'll show you our box. It's worked out really well. So his main 100 amp breaker is here, but I'll pull this off. There's these little tabs that you can knock out. And behind here, we can add a double pull breaker. So we're just gonna knock however many of these we need to put our breaker here, wire it in, and it's as easy as that to get our power. So if you have extra slots like this, you're golden. Um, and even if you have to run this further, you can put a disconnect that has to be at the unit if the unit is farther than six feet from the main panel. So right back here is where our new uh, GE 20 amp breaker is going to go and then we're going to use one of these uh, half inch knockouts here and run it out to our unit. So this is where the head unit is going to go. Our condenser is right on the other side of this wall. Right down there as you can see. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to find our studs so that we can attach our bracket to the wall. So here's our inside unit. And again, this is the Turbro Greenland um, unit. And one thing right out of the gate that I like about this system is that to take out the screen and clean it, it's all right here on the top. So in a lot of other models, you have to open this and remove two screens. Whereas this one is just one screen and you just pop it out, rinse it, pop it back in and you're golden. So I love that about this Turbro uh, mini split. So we're gonna flip this over and show you the bracket and how to get that removed. So this is the back side of our bracket. Pretty much all of these are laid out the same. There's one Phillips screw you need to remove here. And then these bottom brackets will just pop out. And then we can go ahead and get this mounted to our wall. All right, so we have our studs marked. We're gonna get our bracket and we're gonna try and center it on this wall so it looks nice or between the window and that wall rather. And then we need a minimum of six inches from the ceiling um, to get proper airflow. So that's pretty much the only thing involved with these mini splits. Um, being as this is a small room or a small space, um, it doesn't really matter if it's centrally located, but if you're cooling a larger space, you wanna try and keep this centrally located so it can distribute that air um, evenly. So what I like to do before I take this bracket off is just verify where our center point is. So we're 43 total. So we're gonna divide that by two and that should give us our center. So that would be 21 and a half. So this mark here is gonna be at 21 and a half. And we have movement being as this can move back and forth but we're going to make sure that the center is where this is and not this. My Mr. Cool unit, the, this was not centered. It was offset. And so I had to drill my holes twice. So make sure you measure the whole thing and then mark the center of your bracket. All right, so because our studs are right here and right here, we're not gonna center this on the wall. So it's gonna be offset to the right just a little bit, but it'll still fit in this space, no problem. All right, so our, our uh, bracket is completely mounted. So we've got a stud here that we're hitting, stud there with three screws, and then we've got two anchors here. So this bracket is not going anywhere. So we're gonna go ahead and get our head unit and just set it in place to see if everything fits. Then we're going to make our hole here, 
and then we'll go ahead and start getting our refrigerant lines and our wiring run. Since we want our refrigerant piping to come out of the left side, we're gonna leave it oriented this way. Otherwise, if you wanted it to come out of the right side, you would fold these refrigerant pipes out this way. And they're specifically designed right here with a spiral uh, copper pipe so that it won't kink. So we'll go ahead and get this hung on the wall and see how it fits. So we're just gonna kind of center it here and we're gonna put the top end against the drywall, drop it down and it'll grab on those top pieces. So that's where the unit's gonna be. Now um, we can get like a roll of tape or something just to put in here to hold this unit off the wall so that we can make our connections, hook up our condensate drain, and then we'll permanently clip this into the bracket. Um, but right now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna roughly eyeball where our refrigerant pipes are gonna come out. We're gonna mark where it's gonna be behind the head unit, and then we'll take this back off and drill our hole. One other thing to keep in mind is you do want to kind of tilt this a little bit down. Nothing crazy, just maybe slightly down. So that way with our condensate drain, it's going to have a downward slope. All right, so we're through, we can see daylight. So our sleeve should fit perfectly right in that hole. Okay, so our hole is right there. So we're gonna be, we're kind of forced to put it right kind of in the center and then we're gonna come over and make our connections. And this is the piece that will slide into the wall to prevent that line set for catching, from catching anything sharp and uh, we'll make sure we have a good sealed connection. So we're gonna go ahead and slide this into that hole and then we can go ahead and start feeding our refrigerant lines and our condensate drain and the communication wire. All right, so this is our liquid line. This is gonna be a quarter inch line and it's extremely easy to maneuver and to unspool. And the proper way to do this is to lay it on the ground and just unspool it like this. You can put your foot on it, just don't um, push, put too much pressure. The thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to pull it this way and try and straighten it out because that that will kink the line so just kind of go in sections and you can just straighten it out like that so if we measure right here and again we have our unit set and we have over here a roll of duct tape just to give us some clearance to work with our refrigerant piping so if we catch on to the end of this We've got eight inches from the outside to this drywall. And then if we measure from the center of this hole to our suction line, we've got about 12 inches. And then if it's a little bit short or long, we have about an inch both ways. And then for our liquid line here, we want that one at about 10 inches. So we're gonna bend these accordingly and we should have a really nice fit to make our connections here. All right, so we actually ended up having enough slack here uh, because this this uh, sleeve can move around inside of this wall. So we have enough slack to where these are perfect. That one connects there, and this one will connect right here. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and slide our insulation on here just to make sure everything is sealed and then we're gonna use nylog blue on these flare joints and we're gonna torque them to the correct spec. Then we'll be ready to uh, run our condensate drain and our communication wire, and then we can permanently uh, put this onto the wall. All right, so one thing that's important with the, this uh, indoor unit is it comes pre-charged with nitrogen and in order to verify that this doesn't have any leaks, what we need to do is pull these caps off. So what we're gonna do is just crack this one and we should hear some nitrogen come out of this. There we go, I can start to hear it. So 
So we're just gonna let this slowly leak out. Depending on how much is in here, this thing could shoot off. So maybe we'll loosen this one too. <clears throat> and in the meantime, you'll notice um, this one has a good connection, a good length, so we can just connect these. But this one, once it's pushed up against the wall where we want it, we're actually gonna cut this one about right here and we're gonna show you how to make a flare joint in case you need to shorten the line set on your system. Now what we're gonna be using is just a Husky flare tool. If you wanna find this product, you can find it on our Amazon store. Simply go down to the video description, click my favorite HVAC tools, and you'll find this product there. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and just mark this and cut it. So this is where we want it as flush to this drywall as possible. And the end of this flare is about right here. Now we have some wiggle room left and right. So we're gonna make our cut right here. There we go. Now the next thing we want to do before we make our flare is we want to deburr the inside of this pipe. Uh, what we're going to be using is just a cone deburring tool. You want to make sure this is somewhat pointed down so that you get all the debris out. But we're just going to feed that cone in, spin it a few times, tap it and make sure you get all that debris out. And we're going to do it on both sides here. This one is for the outside. All right, so we're ready to make our flare. All right, so after you have your pipe cut, you always wanna make sure you take this off and put it on, because I've forgotten to do that several times. I had to recut it and redo it. So we're gonna be using the coned end that has all the numbers on it. So this is a half inch pipe. So we're just gonna open this up and we're gonna put it on the half inch slot here and we're just going to make sure that it's flush with the outside of our tool next what we're going to do is we're going to take the actual tool that makes the flare so this part is going to feed in where these little uh, grooves are so we're just going to slide this on and what you can do is tighten this a little bit at a time until you start feeling these these grooves click so when we feel it click on half inch right there. That's where we need to tighten this down. So we're gonna give this a real good crank. Make sure that it's crimped down on that pipe real good. Okay. And next what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tighten this and you'll notice once our flare is done this uh, thing will just start spinning freely and it'll actually stop flaring this pipe. So see how it's just spinning now? It's not doing anything. So now we're just gonna reverse it and that little tooth will grab until we're fully off of our flare. Now we can go ahead and back this off and we should have our flare. And there you have it. Really nice flare and it'll just go like that and now we have the proper distance to make our joint there all right so we've got our flare done all of these are ready to go we've got our nylog blue and I just wanted to show so the install guide they've been making these a lot nicer they're more compact and this one is nice because it actually converts it for you for the size pipe and for foot pounds which is most common here in the US. Uh, the Della system that we put in was all millimeters and Newton meters, and I had to convert everything, which was kind of a pain. So our quarter inch uh, pipe is gonna be at 24 foot pounds or 25, and the half inch one is gonna be 62 foot pounds. 
All right, so this is our nylog blue. If you get a little bit in the line, this is compatible with all refrigerants. So you want you don't wanna get a bunch of it in there, but if you get a little bit in, it's not a big deal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our nylog right here on just on this flare right here on both of these. We don't wanna put it on here or here. Um, and these are our dry torque specs. You don't wanna get it on the threads either. We're just gonna start with our small quarter inch line. Just like that. Get these lined up here and threaded on. So our torque specs for this in the manual actually said 25 and like 60 for this. Um, but upon doing some further research, we found that a quarter inch line typically has about eight to 10 foot pounds and a half inch should be about 35. So that's what we're gonna go to. We tried to go to 25 on this and I did not feel comfortable with it. So just keep that in mind if you're doing this install yourself. Um, you definitely don't wanna strip one of these out cause that would definitely end up in, in a refrigerant leak. So if you watch our gauge right here, we're just gonna make sure we go to about 10 foot pounds right there. So that is all we need for the small line. So now let's make our connection for the big line. So we're gonna put our nylog blue right here, just on the flared end. And we'll go ahead and make this connection here. And this one, we're gonna do about 35 foot pounds. All right, so these should be plenty tight. Um, now what we're gonna do is we need to make sure that all of this metal is covered because otherwise you're gonna have issues with condensate water. So what we're gonna do is, that actually works pretty perfectly. We're just gonna make sure that this goes all the way around and overlaps. And we're just gonna use duct tape to make sure we have a good seal here. Okay, so we've got all of this insulated and taped. There's no air that's gonna be able to get to this. So we're gonna avoid condensation there. The next thing we're gonna do is just hook up our condensate tube and we'll fish it through that hole. And then also our communication wire and we'll show you how to wire it in up here. All right, so we just have our condensate tube connected there. Uh, you can choose to tape that connection if you want to. Um, but it's not gonna come off either way. It's a really snug fit. Now on here for our electrical, very basic. We just have three signal wires and a ground. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna feed this in through the backside. There's a little opening down there. Once we get it fed through, we'll just make these three connections. And I do like the fact that um, this kit actually has them labeled. So white is two, red is one, Black is three and green is ground. All right, so our wiring is done. We have red, white, black, green. And then we have this little strain relief to just keep these wires um, behind that. We'll go ahead and put our little cover back on. We'll get this tucked and then we should be able to permanently push this onto the wall. So all of our connections are made. The last thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna give pressure on this towards the wall and these two notches should, um, or these two brackets should lock into place. So I just found out that on this turbo model, another really cool feature is that this piece actually comes off. So if you want to access and just see if there's anything holding you up, that's a huge advantage to the turbo system. Whereas a lot of the other ones you can't, there's not a piece here that you can remove. So we found that our electrical was holding us up and the unit was shifted too far to the left. So we're just gonna simply slide this back in and it'll just snap into place here. Just like that. And now we should be able to push this straight down and it clips into those two grooves. Perfect. 
All right, so here's where we're at. We've just got all of this tied together, our drain line, our communication wire, and refrigerant piping. And as you can see, it's coiled up here. So all we're doing is we're slowly unspooling this and we're gonna get this to where it fits nicely on here. And we're gonna do that with both lines. So that's pretty much where we're gonna have them. So we're gonna cut our insulation back here and then we're gonna get an exact measurement, cut these, flare them, and then we'll make our attachment. All right, so we got our insulation taken off. This is just about perfect. Um, these are right where we want them. So we're just gonna verify that the line up here is straight up and down before we make our cuts. And we've got a cover on the way for this. So the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cover this, make it look nice, and he can paint this to match if he wants to. So that looks pretty straight. So we can go ahead and mark these and cut them. All right, now a little trick that you can do is you can pull this insulation back and you can just crimp this just ever so slightly. You don't have to put much pressure on it at all and that'll give you plenty of room to work with. Now we're gonna slide this over. We're gonna deburr it and then we'll make our flare. All right, so again, we're gonna have the coned end pointed out. This is the half inch uh, line, so we're gonna go right here. I'm gonna make sure that we're flush with this outside edge here. Now we're gonna make sure that this guy is where these little notches are. So we're just gonna slide this on and you'll notice these little grooves as they hit. That's the one we want right there. And this will self-center, crimp it down really good. All right, so we're ready to make our flare. it once it starts spinning then you can just back it off until it grabs back it off all the way there you go so you'll have these little groove or these little uh shavings from where the tool uh holds on to it and there you have it, another beautiful flare. So we'll get our nylog and we'll go ahead and make this connection. All right, so that one's good. So we'll just repeat that same process with our liquid line. So you'll notice this little thing pop out when this is when this flare is done. See how it just popped out. Now this isn't doing anything. We're going to wait for it to grab and then pull it back out. There you go. All right, so our lines are fully connected. What we can go ahead and do next is pull our vacuum. And while we're pulling our vacuum, we'll make our electrical connections right here. All right, so what we're doing here is we've got our conduit attached with the liquid tight fitting there. And we're just, we put some WD-40 down in this conduit and we're just forcing it into here. And we're just waiting for that to come up through here. So these liquid type fittings are real easy to use. They just snap over the conduit and you tighten it and that's it. 
So we've got a good length there. We're just gonna put that nut on and then we'll get this the right length. All right, so we have our connections made in here. Again, the polarity doesn't matter. Just one lead will go to one, one to the other. So we have two hot legs. This one, since it's white, we have it wrapped with red tape. So we're good to put this cover back on. And then when we're ready to fire up the unit, we'll flip that on. All right, so for our vacuum, we're gonna be using the Navac 4CFM battery powered pump. Uh, we've got about half charge on this battery, but this is not gonna take long at all on a mini split system. This literally should take about five minutes to do. Now, a couple of things, pretty much all of these uh, mini splits that are made by Medea, like Pioneer, Senville, Cooper and Hunter, this one is Turbro. Um, they're gonna have a 5 16 um, fitting here. So you can't use your quarter inch hoses to attach to this. You will have to have some sort of adapter. Now, what I recommend is picking up one of these now they sell these in a quarter inch and a 5 16 and the way that you can tell the difference is the 5 16 is a pink one and this is a great tool to have in general in case you have a leaky Schrader core you can uh, remove that and replace it without having to evacuate the system. So what we're going to do to begin with is we're going to remove this piece from the tool and we're going to take out our Schrader core. Now, if you want to leave the Schrader core in, you can. This isn't uh, mandatory, but this will help you to pull a vacuum way faster. So now that our core is out, we're just going to set it up here on top of the unit and we'll attach our Schrader core tool. So once we have our tool put on, we're going to put on our micrometer next. Now, this is something even as a DIYer. I highly recommend. You can get these for less than $200. They're not super cheap, but this will basically replace having to do a pressure test with nitrogen. And basically what we're after is we're trying to get 500 microns. That means we're pulling all of this moisture out of this line set. And this is the means by which we're gonna monitor how dry the system is before we let all of this refrigerant into these lines. Now for all of you who are wondering, these condensers come pre-charged with refrigerant. As you can see right here, it says 410A, 50 ounces. This is pre-charged. So we're just getting all of the air out of the line set and then we're gonna open these valves right here and let this refrigerant in. So this is a critical part. I've seen a lot of mini splits that were bone dry after a couple of years of use because they didn't make sure and use this and they actually had a leak. So we're just gonna tighten this up here. And these all have the Schrader core depressors. Okay, so now that we have this hooked up, we're going to hook up our hose. Now, if you don't have a special hose or anything, you can just run a regular quarter inch hose. But the one that I have is larger diameter. So we're gonna hook that up from here up to here on the vacuum pump and then we'll get our vacuum started now this is just a standard quarter inch hose uh, this one's a little bit larger diameter than your regular um, gauge hoses but you can buy these separately on amazon so we got that end connected there and then up here we're going to go to the quarter inch port on our vacuum pump Make sure these are all tight and we'll go ahead and power this on. Now, once this has pulled the vacuum out of this hose, then we'll go ahead and open up our Schrader core tool down here. So let's go ahead and turn this on. And we'll see how many microns we're pulling. And you'll notice when I open this, the pitch of the vacuum pump will change. So we're already down to 4,000. Our target is to get this down below 500 microns. And then we're gonna do a decay test. So we're gonna close this and isolate the pump from everything. And as long as this doesn't rise above 500, then we're golden. We have zero leaks and we can go ahead and let the refrigerant in. 
All right, so it's 609. We just isolated the um, this from the rest of the system. Um, we were at about 120 when we turned this off. We're slowly rising, but once it gets to a certain point, it'll stop. It looks like we've stabilized at about 240. And again, as long as we don't go past 500, we're golden. Then we can take these two caps off and we'll show you how to do that. 612, we're just about past our DK test. And as you can see, we're still sitting at 250. So we're well below that 500 um, threshold. So we're gonna take both of these caps off. And inside of here, there is an Allen key. Now this particular kit did not come with that Allen key. So we're gonna grab that. And as soon as we pass our decay test, we're gonna unthread these Allen keys all the way out. And that will allow that refrigerant to escape from the condenser into the rest of the system. All right, so we're well past our 10 minute mark for our decay test. So this system is completely tight. There's no leaks whatsoever. And if you did have a leak, you would be creeping up past 500 easily, if not well into the thousands, it would be pretty obvious if you had a leak. So we're just gonna open this up. All the way until it stops. And you heard all that refrigerant flowing in. Same thing with the liquid side. That's it. So this system is ready to go. Uh, the last step we're gonna do here on the refrigeration side is we need to put our Schrader core back in. So we're gonna show you how to do that. So this is closed. We can go ahead and remove this hose. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our Schrader core and we're just gonna pop it into the tool itself. Just like that. We're going to slide this into the end and then we're gonna slide this piece on, thread it on until it's tight. And then when we open this, you'll notice that it'll push this out, uh, meaning there's pressure in here. So we're gonna take one hand, we're gonna press it forward and the other will thread it in. And you'll notice this gap getting a little bit smaller and when this is fully seated, you'll feel some resistance, and that's it. Now, instead of taking this whole thing off, we're gonna close it, and we're gonna slowly take this end piece off first. A little bit of oil there. Now, what we're gonna do is slowly open this, and that will just verify that our Schrader core is doing what it's supposed to be doing. There you go. And that is it. So we can throw our cap back on. And lastly, we're gonna do our electrical and this system will be ready to fire up. Okay, so we're just gonna take this cover off for the electrical. And this is one thing I like about this system and some of the other ones is that this piece is separate. Whereas like the Mr. Cool, this piece is actually attached to this. So when you're doing your wiring and hooking up your conduit, this thing is just kind of hanging out and it's super annoying. So I like this design a lot better. So we notice our three signal wires here for the low voltage side. So one, two, and three are just gonna match up with those. Ground will go to ground. And then for our high voltage side, our one leg of power will go here second leg will go there and ground will go there and then we have two little strain reliefs here all right so we've got our liquid tight um, attached we're just going to cut these to length so we're just going to go straight up with these two again we're going to wrap this one with some red tape and then our ground is going to go over here to the ground so again temporarily we're going to just use this fitting that it came with so we're just going to slip this on We'll come back and put a strain relief, but I'd like to get this system up and running for my neighbor. So I'm just gonna slide these in and then we're just gonna lock that into that little groove there. And now let's just strip these back. 
All right, so we got a connector put on here for our ground. That was the only one we needed a, a wire connector for. But we're just gonna go back through here and just make sure all of these are tight. All right, perfect. And then we got our two rubber holders in place. We'll go ahead and put our cap back on here, just like that. And we are ready to fire this bad boy up. So this is the first piece to our outside kit. So we're gonna put a bead of caulk on that top piece. And then these ones, they simply slide up in there. And these are the middle connectors. So these, this will just attach to the building with one screw. And then that will cover any joints that it has and make it completely waterproof. Okay, so we've got two segments on here. So we're just gonna slide it up under there, tuck it into the middle piece. There's a little stop right here that stops that middle piece. On this piece, this just slides, locks in on the outside. So you just push the base in and it locks in. And then we'll just slide that up into the next piece. Just like that. Now guys, we are completely wrapped up on this install. We have our cover, all of this is sealed up, so no water or anything will be able to get in through that line set. Beautiful system here. We're gonna put some lag bolts there. Um, they have the rubber grommets that they came with, or the little rubber pads. And he's gonna extend this tube and feed some of his plants over here with that. Everything fit really nicely. I'm really happy with this install. Let's go ahead and fire this up and we'll show you the inside unit and how quiet this guy is. So our unit's very easy to use. We're just gonna power it on. And for the sake of just testing this out, we're gonna put it in turbo mode. As you can see that little guy there with his arms up. And this unit has come on. We have our LED light there with the temperature that we're headed for. And we've got air movement. So we'll give that a few minutes. Um, we actually ran this for the first time yesterday and everything was blowing out ice cold air. But I just wanted to show you how easy it is to use and uh, how the install turned out. As you can see, the system is up and running, blowing tons of heat out of here, working really well already. You can feel the uh, suction line is super cold. This thing is mega quiet. You can't hardly even hear it running, just standing right next to it. Well guys, I hope you found this video informative as far as installing a mini split system. Now, if you'd like to see how to convert your air conditioning system to a heat pump so that you can use it in heating and cooling for heat and have another backup heat source like electric strips or for me, gas heating, check out this video and I'm sure you'll find it very informative as far as how to convert your straight air conditioner to a heat pump. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.